Well, my name is Danny. I'm from K2 Audiovisual. Um, so today we're going to be going through the uh, interactive projectors, and basically they come with a free set of tools that you can download. So um, to download those, I'm pretty sure you get in touch with your network administrator. He'll be able to put them onto your computers for you. But you should all have um, these tools on your desktop when you plug in and start running your tools. So these are the Epson Easy Interactive Tools. Um, the way that these work is, um, or this technology works, is your old technology, the um, touch sensitivity was built into the board, but this is just a stock standard porcelain whiteboard, so you can actually write on this with an average whiteboard marker and it won't do any damage. Um, and then as a backup, you've got your nice interactive projector. So, with interactive technology, what you've got to be sure of is that um, this little box underneath uh, is basically an invisible curtain. It projects an invisible infrared beam over the board and wherever you touch the board and break that beam, it picks up your finger. So that's how that works. Now, the way that we um, like to have our boards is, you know, as pretty as decorations are, we do like to keep it decoration free because if you've got anything interfering with your board, any sort of um, decorative items, the beam will pick that up and it will start drawing on the board, which you don't want. So, to go through the tools, to get started, um, now the, I'm operating off of a Mac, so depending whether you're Mac or Windows, it might look a little bit different. Uh, but the way that this works is you've got um, some annotation tools, which is a toolbar on the side. You can bring that on either side, depending which side you prefer to teach from. And you've also got some extra tools down the bottom. There's also two modes to this board as well. So you've got um, your desktop mode, which is um, basically just a giant iPad. The way you touch this board is exactly how you would use it on an iPad. You can open applications, window browsers, things like that. And then it's also got a whiteboard mode as well. So I'll start on the desktop and I'll just bring this across here so you can see. So if I was to click this top button here, the mouse, and it's blue, it means we're in mouse mode. So that means that wherever I touch the board, I can open up you know, applications and things like that because I hide my toolbar, it's a bit tricky to get to, but I can open up you know, Windows um, icons and things like that, programs, all your Microsoft programs, Word, PowerPoint, anything like that, you can operate and just use your finger over the mouse. When it's not blue, it means I'm in annotation mode. So the way that works is um, it switches everything off and I start writing over the top of any program that's on the screen. So best way to describe this is your old clunky overhead projectors and the clear bit of whiteboard marker. Now is um, a interactive projector on a stock stand and whiteboard. So any application I've got open, I can write over the top of. That includes window um, your Internet Explorer, any office programs, things like that. Okay, going down the list, undo, redo, pretty self-explanatory. As long as you click undo and redo, it will do what it asks. Shapes, so that's a drop-down menu. You've got different thicknesses, different colours, different types of shapes, and it's just a matter of clicking and dragging. Pretty simple stuff. Text tool, this is like a text box. So if you're familiar with Word and PowerPoint, you click and drag to make a text box and your keyboard will pop up automatically on the screen. Now, depending what version of uh, Windows you're running, if you are a Windows user, Windows 7 users have the option of doing handwriting to text recognition. After Windows 7, they took that away, which wasn't very helpful for interactive users, and you're stuck with the keyboard. Now, my advice is if you've got any more than three words to write, it's probably quicker to just duck across to your laptop and do it. But you've got all your basic editing features here as well. If anything's in the wrong spot or you need to move anything around, your select tool will be your best friend. So you can click on and manipulate anything on the board. It's going to be a little bit cheeky today. Okay. You can also select multiple items and group them together in your drop down list. I'll show that again. Your little arrow down here does give you extra options. You can duplicate, clone, group things, move them forwards and backwards and things like that. So to ungroup, and move things around. Your select tool, oh, make sure that's clicked. Click and drag. Um, okay, going down the list, my freehand annotation tools. So my pen mode is the first one here. Again, different thicknesses, different colours, just a matter of selecting which one you want and away you go. Quick tip, whether you're using um, the pen, which I've got over here. Some prefer to use a pen because it's just a bit more comfortable. So whether you're using the pen or your hand to do your writing, 
Some of you might be in the habit of writing like this and nothing happens. And it's because you're casting a shadow. Your light source is coming from above. So to fix that really simple solution, you just tip your pen upside down and then you have no problem. And as you can see, I have a very limited vocabulary. All I can say is hello. Um, so that was your pen tool here. So that's the little drop down icon, shoot it out to the left and you've got different thicknesses and different colours. The next one down is your highlight tool. So this is a transparent pen, so it automatically defaults to quite a thick, color, uh, thick pen and the colour yellow. I find yellow a bit boring, so I'm going to go pink. And this means you can colour over the top of text, pictures, anything you like. It's a transparent colour. Going down the list, you've got some quick select options here. So your black, your red, your blue, there's like the standard pen defining in your drawer. So depending on what side you click on depends what thickness you get. Your eraser tool. Now if you've got any shapes or text, it will delete the whole lot. However, any freehand annotations you've done, you can delete parts of. And if your board's looking a little bit chaotic like this, my favourite button of all is the delete all. Wipes it clean, starts again. <laughs> Okay, just a quick explanation on these little two buttons here. So we've got um, this little key icon. Basically, if I've got this over here and I'm writing away, my toolbar stays there. However, if this is flicked up, so unlocked, and I start writing, it will disappear temporarily. Don't panic, you can bring it back. All you need to do is click on one of the arrows on either side of the board and bring it back. And if you don't want it to disappear, you just lock it down. And another little quick tip, if you've got the finger touch model projector, this is a great thing to have, is if you're choosing to, um, all projectors come with two pens, say you've got one that's a red pen, one that's a blue pen, and then my finger can be an eraser. So if I'm writing on the board and I make a mistake, I can use my hand to quickly rub it out. Pretty cool. Okay. Going down the bottom list, you've got some more options down here. Now, when you first install these tools, this screen will come up by default. Up to you whether you use it or not. Personally, I find it useless, so I just tick this little box that says don't bother me again, and I go straight into desktop annotations. Now, common question, how do I save my annotations? Well, you've got a little save icon down here. They still use the old floppy disk, I don't know why. And it automatically defaults to, um, when you first install the tools, this EIT file. Now, EIT stands for Easy Interactive Tools. Now, in desktop mode, completely useless. So you need to use either a JPEG or a PDF. PDF's probably the most common one. Give it a file name and then make sure you find somewhere where you can, uh, in your filing system, where you can save it. So, I'll click Save. And it's basically like hitting print screen. It's going to take a snapshot of your entire desktop. So if I go into mouse mode and I now open up my PDF, there it is, there's the picture. So that means that over the top of anything, whether it's an online game, um, a YouTube video, anything like that where I've written something over the top of, I hit that save button and it just saves it as is, like taking a photo. All right. Page up, page down is your arrows here. So the way that works is if you've got um, a web browser or multi-page PDF, you can use this to scroll instead of trying to find your little bar on the side. My favourite part, the toolbox. I'm just going to um, draw a smiley face up here. This is Frank, everyone. Here's Frank. Now, toolbox. Looks a bit like a briefcase toolbox. I don't know what it is. Um, first one here is your zoom tool. So select this, click and drag and it zooms over the top of anything, blows it up the side. That's pictures, text, anything you want. You just make the size and it will blow it up for you. Next one, my favourite one, great for anyone that's easily distracted, is the spotlight tool. You can change this to any shape or size, move it around and focus on any part. I've seen this used in a, a, a science class where they were studying, you know, parts of the human body, forensics, things like that, and they just focused on a certain part of the crime scene, you know, things like that. It's a really handy tool, that spotlight. And in your settings, you can change it to a circle, which I'll show you later on. Next one is your blind shade, great for quizzes. So you can cover up any answers. You can have, uh, great for language classes, you can have your translation on one side and your English on the other. And you can use this to cover up anything that you can slowly reveal. 
also in your toolbox. If your computer is networked in the building, you can print whatever's on the board as well. Same, same principle as your save icon. Um, you hit print, it takes a snapshot of your entire screen and asks to send it to a printer somewhere. However, we're trying to save on paper, so only print if you really have to. Settings, a couple of reasons you'll need to go in here. First of all is to change that spotlight shape to a circle. Um, secondly is under your save tab, this is where you will set your default save location. So really important to set this up when you first install the tool. Um, reason being is that Epson creates a folder buried deep within your system that you can never find. So uh, best to select somewhere like the teacher's network or your own folder somewhere. Don't save to desktop because all your lessons will just constantly clog up your desktop. So try and find somewhere in your network that you can, find, uh, can save it. Um, so you navigate through, find where you want to save it and then click open. And you also set your default file type. So I like mine to save in PDF, so I've set it to PDF. Secondly is your whiteboard mode. So this is the second mode I was talking about. This one you have to leave it as EIT. That's because it's its own file type, just like smart, smart notebook, whatever it's called, smart, smart software, has its own file type. Epson has its own file type and it only open, opens Epson tools. Okay, so same principle there. They're the only two reasons you'll need to go into settings. If for any reason you lose your keyboard or you want to be able to use it to type in a URL on the board, it is in your toolbox. So you can click it there and it will come up. If you're a Windows user, your keyboard will look a little bit different. And last but not least, you've got a um, capture button. So that's like hitting print screen, but now it's floating on your clipboard somewhere and it's asking you to paste it somewhere. So somewhere like a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation, something like that. Alright, moving on to whiteboard mode. This is where the fun happens. Now, unfortunately, when you open up whiteboard mode, this lesson will not pop up by default. You have to make your own. Um, interactive lessons um, goes from, you know, cutting out shapes and paper on your lounge room floor to now putting it in digital format at the comfort of your computer. So a couple of examples of how to use your whiteboard is uh, you can structure your day and your, and your lessons and things like that. Um, it's essentially PowerPoint, a really basic version of PowerPoint. So I've got here a preview of my slides. If any of these happen to have quiz answers on them, I can hide them by unchecking that mark there and it will temporarily hide them. To bring them back, I just click on this icon down here and lock it down if I want it to stay. Okay. So here we've got a basic roll call. I'll get my students to come in, select the select icon, grab a pen and click their name and drag it across to let me know that they're here today. Really easy, really simple. You can do this, you can apply this to just about anything. My favourite one is the money game. So obviously this one's set more for primary school, but you can see how it all work. So I've actually built this just using basic shapes and text. Um, if you don't feel very creative, you can just go to Google, copy, paste $5 notes and just paste them in here. So, uh, But I'm going to show you the cloning tool. So with my select tool selected, I'm going to click on this drop down icon and I'm going to choose, where is it? Internet cloning. There we go. Alternatively, the box that you've got here up the top, if you click that, does the same thing. So I'm going to do this to all my money and I wish I could do this to my own wallet. I'll be a millionaire. And I'm asking my students, how much money do I need to pay the shopkeeper to buy these chocolates? And I'll get my students to click and drag across any notes that they need, any coins, things like that. So infinite cloning is another really, really handy tool. You can use it again in so many different scenarios. Um, you can have a bank of nouns, adjectives, verbs, things like that. You can apply it in English lessons. And then last but not least is your uh, dual pen mode. So this is a multi-touch projector. That means you can comfortably have two students up here at the same time. And we can do a maths race. Um, typically I'd have another pen on me, but I can use my finger as well. So I'm going to use that and that. And at the same time, I can have students up here doing maths. And I'm ambidextrous. How's that? Um, so it's not one or the other, the old technology, it was one pen at a time. Now it's, you can have two students comfortably up here at the same time and it's not going to lag or mess up or detect anything different. And as you can see, I can use my finger as a third one as well. So if you wanted three students up here, get one student to use their finger, there's three people that can do the race. 
couple more tools down the bottom. You've got a few more buttons down here. So if I was to add some slides, it's a plus sign here. Duplicate, so if I wanted a couple of students to give this race a go, I can duplicate it a couple of times. Delete slides if I don't need them. Page up, page down is now slide up, slide down. So you'll see the box move up and down. Now, toolbox, so you've got all the same um, little icons in here, so your zoom and your spotlight, but you've got two extra ones in here now. So I'm just going to go down to a blank slide. In my toolbox, the first one here is backgrounds. So this projector comes with built-in backgrounds, which is really handy if you've got messy writing. You can bring up some lined paper, graph paper, or if you have a custom type of background that you want to use, uh, you can simply open it up, navigate through your filing system, find it, and upload it as your own background. So that goes for photos, anything like that. So lined paper makes it a little bit neater to write on, um, and graph paper, I've seen an entire physics lesson built into this, um, this software, and it's amazing. Um, and then next to that, you've got your insert images. So going back to the whole build, building lessons, if you, you know, don't want to build them out of shapes and text, you can just navigate through your system, find a picture that works. Let's see this one here. There's a nice beach. I'm going to open that one. And using my select tool, I can then manipulate it. There we go. So you're essentially building presentations on slides, but it's in a different program other than PowerPoint. Um, if you've got a document camera, this is going to use the camera that's in my laptop, but if you've got a document camera or um, web camera or something like that, you can use this to actually um, blow up an image underneath it to 96 inches across the board. So everybody can see it. It means nobody's huddling around your desk. Hello over there. Um, and you can annotate over the top of a live presentation as well. So this has also got a time lapse and recording feature. This is my favourite thing. I've seen this time lapse used in a science lab. You know what was great about it? They put a petri dish of bacteria underneath a document camera overnight. They watched this bacteria grow overnight and it was in a time lapse, so it was only about a, I don't know, three minute video. And this bacteria grew and it was just incredible. And it's this little fold up thing that sits on your table. I suggest every school get one. It's fantastic. Many, many opportunities. So um, your camera does open up a whole lot of um, other opportunities and using it in conjunction with your Epson pools, again, opens up a lot more lessons to be had. Other than that, that's it. All you need to do is pick up a pen and practice. Don't be afraid to mash any buttons. You can't actually break anything. And just get up here and have a go. So the more you use it, the more you get familiar with it, and then it'll just be a part of your everyday teaching life. So.